Okay, so um, I want you to go over this question, question two, because it um, illustrates to some things that you uh, now have to start paying attention to when you are analyzing static equilibrium scenarios. Uh, some of this you have done already when you looked at rigid body motion, um, rigid body motion questions and um, when you are applying Newton's law problem solving strategy to uh, extended the body. You've already done some of that. And um, in the some semesters past, I used to teach it so that static equilibrium came first. I don't do that anymore, but um, that order still couldn't make sense. So in this question, I kind of want you to demonstrate, illustrate some of the considerations that you should um, pay particular attention to as you are applying Newton's law strategy um, to the Newton's law strategy. And in case you haven't noticed it, because I guess none of it, in nowhere in the question here kind of um, explicitly mentions the force. And you know, it's asking for center of mass. It doesn't look like it's asking for force, but this is a Newton's law strategy question because the way you answer this question is by analyzing forces. So, um, so yeah, it says a small 1300 kilogram SUV has a wheel base of 3.2 meters. And you kind of have to know <laughs> what that means. And what that means is here, let me just draw a regular diagram. Not a free body diagram, but just regular diagram. And uh, let me kind of uh, draw a representation of an SUV. Uh, I think I'm still gonna use a box because it doesn't need to be any more sophisticated than a box. There's wheels. And I believe the phrase wheelbase, I'm guessing, but it refers to the distance between the wheels. So you can almost look at it as giving you, okay, here's a, the front part. Oops, I probably should write that. Front part of SUV, and this is the part that's in contact with the ground. And this is the part that's in contact with the ground. So the wheelbase, uh, let me label this as L, gives you the distance between those two. So, um, okay. Uh, so will be of some length and it says if 64% of its weight rests on the front wheels, how far behind the front wheel is the wagon's the center of mass? And I was saying that um, even though nowhere here says forces and I guess uh, weight is a kind of force, but beyond that, there's no reference to force. This is a Newton's law strategy question because the way you solve it is by applying Newton's law strategy. So you go through the standard strategy that we teach. Step number one, you draw a free body diagram. So let me draw a free body diagram with um, necessary details. So uh, we started doing this with uh, rigid body motion and we continue to uh, doing this with uh, static equilibrium and what we do is, is the free body diagram we draw now will have to become slightly more complicated than simple dot because uh, we could use a dot when we didn't care um, where on which part of the object the force was on. Now we care because we now have to start calculating torque. So because we care about the location of the force, we kind of have to have a representation of the extended body so that we can draw um, forces at the location where they are being applied. So uh, looking at this um, uh, representation of SUV, I know there must be a normal force at the front part of the contact here. So let me draw normal force there. It's normal force, so it must be upward. Oh, oh, I guess I skipped my usual step. Um, I like to draw forces as they are needed. Right now, it looks like I drew this normal force when they are not needed. So let me uh, draw my, the force I would need that necessitates existence of this normal force would be gravity. Um, so there's a gravity acting on this um, 
this SUV that's uh, pulling it downward and normal force is opposing that, keeping it from accelerating downward, that's why it's there. But I need to draw gravity. And with the expand, extended bodies, what you have to remember is that um, you can simplify the representation of gravity by pretending that it acts only at the point of center of mass. Now, in reality, that's not the case. Gravity, it acts all over throughout the entire body. Um, it might be acting a little bit more to the front, a little bit less to the back, if more of the weight is on the front. And um, it, this is a special property of center of mass that you just have to know that with the gravity, you can uh, pretend that that gravitational force over the extended body is acting at the center of mass. And the results you obtain with that assumption will be correct. It's not approximately correct, it's exactly correct. That's a property of center of mass in the context of uh, gravity. So I have a gravity of M gravitational force. Uh, I could write it mg, but it looks like it doesn't. Let me just write W, oh, weight. So there's a weight acting at the center of mass that's pulling it down. That's why the normal force at the front is necessary. And I think once you draw this far and um, you remember the static equilibrium condition that in, with the static equilibrium condition, net force is equal to zero, net torque is equal to zero. We do these two conditions. You need a, a third force because uh, with what you see in this diagram here, there's no way to make the net force, sorry, net torque equal to zero. Uh, let's say if this was the center of rotation, then uh, this is applying clockwise torque and there's no counterclockwise torque, it's gonna rotate. So you need another force that can allow your net torque to come to zero and that'll be the normal force at this uh, uh, rear point of contact. So there will be a uh, normal force at the rear that's needed. I hope all this agrees with your intuition. And you know, it, um, when we apply the full um, Newton's law problem solving strategy, it, you're just uh, adding more detail. It's not, it hope, at some point it should not be in conflict with your intuition. So, so all right, I have my free body diagram. Um, I need to define my axis, and I guess I can just define my regular axis, X and Y. Oh, um, with the um, uh, extended body with a, a torque, I think it's uh, worth kind of being explicitly explicit about the origin. And since it's gonna be asking how far behind the front wheels, let me put the origin here. That's gonna be my center of rotation. So my axis will look like, you know, this is my X and this is my y. Um, okay, I defined my axis, that's the second step. The third step is break down forces into components. Here there's nothing to break down into components, all the forces are vertical. Um, I think one thing I can do while on this step is kind of figure out which force is clockwise, which force is counterclockwise. So this is clockwise force, this is counterclockwise force. Um, and while I'm doing that, I should give um, kind of a sign to clockwise and counterclockwise torque. Uh, let me make this counterclockwise torque uh, positive and this clockwise torque negative. Um, you can do it either, it's just a matter of consistency. Um, and the normal force at the front here, it doesn't produce any torque because the lever arm is zero. Um, Okay, so that's the third step. Now I'm on first step. You write down Newton's second law equations. So I need to write down the net force is equal to zero and net torque is equal to zero equation. And um, yeah, so let me write it down. So net force is equal to zero. So that means the, um, the sum the normal force on the front wheel plus the normal force on the real wheel minus the weight, the downward force is equal to zero. Hmm. 
this doesn't seem to relate to anything that they are asking for here, but let's keep going. The network is equal to zero. So you need to have, um, let me do the positive one first. So the, the lever arm here is the entire distance here. That would be the wheelbase. So lever arm times the, uh, the normal force on the rear, NR. That's the positive uh, counterclockwise torque minus the clockwise torque. Um, oh, and I need this lever arm, and this should be x center of mass. So minus the lever arm, x center of mass, times the weight is equal to zero. And um, okay, that's the end of the standard strategy or the Newton's law problem solving strategy. And this is the point at which you should kind of counter equations and unknowns. You have one, two equations, and let's count my unknowns. I don't know the normal force on the front. I don't know the normal force on the rear. And I don't know the position of the center of mass. Um, so I do this counting to kind of realize uh, if I'm missing any uh, information or if it's information that I had that if I didn't represent it mathematically. And after some time of thinking, I hope you will realize that uh, this information that's given here, that you have never made use of it. So I need to make use of it. It says 60% of its weight rests on the front wheels. So um, let me think it through. I think what that means in mathematical terms is the rest on the front wheels. So that relates to the force, normal force on the front wheel. And F is equal to 60% of its weight. So it's going to be 60%, 0 0.64 times the weight. So I need a that equation. That's going to be my third equation. And with that, I think I should have everything I need. Um, yeah, I think so. Um, yeah, so let me actually use this equation to eliminate the NF from my original system of equations. Then I think uh, it'll kind of be clear what the the future step should be. So let me just uh, kind of we'll see what equation I get. So plugging in equation three into to write blue. equation three into uh, the first equation, I get 0 0.64 weight plus uh, normal force on the rear wheel minus weight is equal to zero. And I can simplify that, but I'll do that in a little bit. So looking at these two equations, I have two unknowns. The, um, I have the, the normal force on the rear that I don't know. And I have the, the X of the center of the mass. And the position of the center of mass is what I want in the end. That's the value that they're asking for. So what I should do in solving this system of equations is first I should solve one of them for NR um, so that I can use that to eliminate the normal force on the real wheel. So let me do that. I am going to, oh, which of these two should I solve for? Um, let me solve the equation two for NR. I think that's the unusual choice. That's probably one that takes actually more work, but hey, I can do either. So let me solve this for NR then when I, what I get is normal force on the rear wheels is equal to um, having moved the second term over, x center of mass times the weight divided by the wheel base is equal to nr. I can plug that into this equation here. Then I get 0 0.64, oh, uh, let me, I guess, combine those now. 0 0.64 minus 1 W will give me minus 0 0.36 W plus the, the, the norm, normal force on the real wheel. X center of mass times 
weight divided by the wheelbase length is equal to zero. And when you look at it, I hope you see that, oh, weight cancels out. I didn't actually need to know the weight. And I can solve for X center of mass here. And when I do, this is what I get. Uh, I get, um, so move 0 0.36 over, X center of mass is equal to 0 0.36 times the wheelbase. So, so yeah, it should be 0 0.36 times 3.2. Um, can I? No, I don't want to do that in my head. So let me just use calculator. Uh, so 3.2 times 0 0.36, 1 1.1152 or 1.15 meters. So 1.15 meters. All right, uh, and it's 1.15, the way we measure the center of mass, which is behind the front wheels. Let's check. Now, for a question like this, um, I think a lot of you might be able to do, uh, do this kind of intuitively. Um, the way you've seen me do this question right now, it's the long way. It, you know, it takes longer time than it had to. The value of doing this a long way is, what if you get a question that's more, this is a pretty simple question. So what if you get a question that's more complicated than this? Then the problem solving approach that you have seen me use, this remains a consistent approach. You can use in questions uh, of many different types and complexity. And that's why it's worth kind of becoming familiar with going through these formal steps so that uh, when you have to, you can. Even though in question like this, if you're kind of intuitively guessing, a lot of you could have gotten this question in a few minutes by just intuitive guessing.